The question is a very important question. And you will notice my answer. I will tackle it from the reality. Before I say the question and the answer, I want you to understand one thing. What I'm about to say can be misunderstood. So please don't misunderstand it. If you have any misunderstandings, raise your hand and stop me here and now. The question is, and listen very carefully, Wallahi, it is a deadly question. Is it compulsory in these days for a woman to cover her face? That's the question. The answer is, every woman who is listening to me now, you are on a certain level. Maintain that level if it is within the frame of the Sharia, with an intention of getting to the next one, and strive towards getting to the next one. Meaning, when I say maintain it, meaning don't go back on it. That's what I meant. If Allah has granted you the ability to put a scarf on your head, don't ever remove it and try to get to the next stage. If Allah has granted you the ability to wear a niqab, don't ever remove it and try to get to the next stage. If Allah has granted you the ability to cover even those eyes of yours and just put a little, a few holes in the, you know, flap, maintain it, get to the next level. If Allah has granted you the ability to wear a cloak, maintain it and get, get to the next level. If Allah has granted you the ability to wear a thick, loose cloak, maintain it and get, get to the next level. If Allah has granted you the ability to wear a cloak or a burqa from your head going down so that even the shape of your shoulders is not shown, maintain it and go to the next level. If Allah has granted you the ability to abstain from speaking to na mahram, maintain it and go to the next level. If Allah has granted you the ability to do hijab and to cover your face even from those who work for you of the opposite sex, maintain it and go to the next level. Subhanallah. So I, I'm sure you can see the levels that I'm speaking about. I have dodged the question and I intend to dodge it intentionally. The reason is, I don't want to give people who are trying, you know, sad news so that they feel, you know, we are useless. Everyone who is trying, try harder. There is no level that you can get to and say, you know what, now I've arrived. Subhanallah. Wallahi, I tell you something, even to do hijab from your own gardeners and maids, it's a requirement of the sharia. Did we know it? That's a level. Have you got to it? If you haven't, there it is. Aim for it. Get there. Allahu Akbar. I know of a woman, subhanallah, a new Muslimah. She accepted Islam a few years ago. She has a swimming pool in her house. Wallahi, she will pack away everybody before she goes and swim. Subhanallah. Everyone is gone outside the gate and the yard. Out. Gone. Besides her and the females that are there. Wallahi, this is it. She won't speak to her maids. Uh, sorry, to her, to her gardeners, those who work for her. That is a level. Though to speak to a, a male who is a stranger, within the limits of the sharia for necessity is permissible. You need to go to the doctor and speak to him. It is permissible within the limits. You don't become too friendly. Remember, the doctor is a good man. You are a good woman, but shaitan is not good. Wallahi. Same applies, you need to speak to Maulana. Maulana is a good man. You might be a good woman, but don't get too friendly. And this is why my policy is, and I'm mentioning it here today, my wife is actually seated here. The reality is, if someone contacts me, I'm speaking of a female, yes, I will respond and I will try to help as much as possible. The minute I feel they are becoming a little bit too friendly, I will tell them, you know what, email me or fax me, subhanallah. That's it, khalas. Because now, where will it head to? I'm a good man, inshallah. And she's probably better than me, inshallah. But shaitan is worse than both of us. And this is why I say, we always need to check ourselves. Allah. So, this is the answer for your question. Dodged, isn't it? You must be upset. But never mind, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to get to the level beyond the one where we are. No matter where you are, let's get to the next level. Don't look at those who are trying. You know what is sad? Sometimes those who cover their faces, and please don't be insulted. Sometimes some of them would tend to look down upon those who haven't covered their faces. Do you know that it is your duty to call them towards the obedience of Allah? Sometimes we look at a Muslim lady in a miniskirt. May Allah grant them all guidance. Our dua, the night of Laylatul Qadr, make dua, Ya Allah, all those women who are astray, Ya Allah, help them. 
make them strong and make us also strong, Ya Allah. They might be astray in one thing, you might be astray in ten things, subhanAllah. They might have a weakness in terms of dress, you might have a weakness and you might be committing zina itself. One is zina of the eyes and the other is the real zina which is worse. So let us always not look down upon others. And you need to say, Ya Allah, there might be a deed or two of hers which you love. Ya Allah, grant her acceptance. Make her from amongst those who will be able to be obedient to your commands and grant her Jannah also. We go around spreading rumors. Firstly, we don't even want to greet such people. And I'm not speaking to the males to go out and greet the women in miniskirts. La, don't misunderstand me. I'm speaking to the females. Sometimes you know it's a Muslim lady. Talk to her. Salaamu Alaikum. How are you doing? My... Don't speak about that topic initially. Become friends with her first. Win her heart. Then wallahi, without even you saying anything, you'll notice her skirt's going longer and longer and longer inshallah. And amazing, sometimes we wear the longest of skirts, but from the top it becomes a little bit too low. Allahu Akbar. And we begin to show our chest and part of it. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us. Remember I'm firing directly. We are all in sun. We know what is going on around us. So we need to deal with this. Sometimes we wear a cloak and a scarf. And this is something very, very important. That scarf is tied in such a way that there is a gap between the scarf and the top of our cloak. Sometimes a lot of our chest is actually showing. And do you know when a person is covered, when a woman is covered, she looks much more beautiful than when she is not. Subhanallah. She is much more attractive. Subhanallah. Do you know why? I can tell you why. When I used to do art at school, I'm actually an artist to be honest with you. But what we were taught is, you know, you must leave some lines. Because beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. Let the eye make that line. Different eyes will make different lines. You know, you shade in a ball, for example. You shade in part of it and the other part, leave it blank. The eye will make that line for you. So what happens? When the woman is covered head to toe, your imagination makes her. Khalas, that's it. So she is more beautiful than she really is. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to understand and the women the ability to understand that really you are much more beautiful in your hijab. Subhanallah. It is Allah. I have read a lot of articles of the new Muslim women who will tell you, Allah, I feel liberated now. I'm not worried about this and that and how many centimeters and they are called these pouches that you get on the side. Allah, they are normal. They are a good sign. Subhanallah. MashaAllah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to be as best as possible. Try harder. Wherever you've got to, don't stop. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was told not to stop until the point of death. Subhanallah. So surely we need to walk up the ladder forever and ever. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability. The sisters, some of them might be cursing me. So I need to also mention a few words for the brothers. Wallahi, wherever we have got, let us get to the next level. If Allah, and I always mention this, people ask me about the beard. And I always say, you know what? What you need to do? Start off, and I said this at the university a few weeks ago. If you don't have a beard, what you need to do, subhanallah, firstly, you need to understand that, listen, we are meant to be having a beard. That is one thing. Secondly, don't be depressed. What you do, if you are weak and you can't keep one altogether, then start off, when you are shaving, leave a few strands right at the bottom here. Something known as a goatee, subhanallah. Keep a few hairs, at least that is the beginning of a beard, isn't it? Subhanallah. You are worried about the trends? That is also in style, subhanallah. So you keep a little goatee. And every time you shave, one hair on this side and one hair on that side, you leave. By the time the year finishes, how many hairs will there be? 365. By the time the next year finishes, how many will there be? And subhanallah, you can actually work your way through to that beard that you won't even notice, subhanallah. But we need to think of these ideas, inshallah. And therefore, I myself, I don't look down upon those who don't have a beard because they might have other deeds that I don't have. I know of some people where I come from, beardless people. But wallahi, they have served Islam even more than I have, subhanallah. Because they have protected Islam and protected the Muslims of the country that I come from, from the level of the government. They have added in laws to protect all of us. Had it not been Allah to use them, we might have today not been able to enjoy the freedoms we are enjoying. So Allah uses different worshippers to serve this deen. In Allah la yu'ayyidu hadha deen bil rajul al A famous hadith. Allah will use a sinner to serve this deen also sometimes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us. And I hope that message has also come across. Subhanallah.